Hey, it's Matt from Custom Car Grills here with a mesh install for the 1995 through 97 Toyota Tacoma. There's a couple different factory grills used on these Tacomas, and the one that I'm using here has the two triangular side sections. What I'm going to do first is cut out the center section and then do the same for the side sections. To get this started, I'll grab an open-ended saw blade like this one. Most any saw blade will work, and I'm just using a general purpose one here. I found it easier to work on the back of the grill, and the saw works through the thin plastic bars quickly and easily. The thicker horizontal bars aren't much more difficult either. When they're all cut, the center piece can be removed and thrown away. Now onto the side pieces, and these require a slightly different approach. I'm going to start with my Dremel and equip the number 543 cutting and shaping wheel. To manage the sides, these big solid parts between the bars should be removed first. I'm staying about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch away from the edge and keeping a steady hand to make sure that I don't slip and dig into the areas that I don't want to. Once the big solid pieces are cut out, then it's time to get the handsaw out again. These bars are as easy to cut out as the main center part. Just be sure not to rush the cuts to avoid damaging areas outside of the main cutting zone. Let's flip this back around and sand down some of the excess plastic. The basic Dremel sanding drum is a good tool to use for this step. I'll work the remnants of the bars down close to being flush with the inner edge of the grill, but still leaving a little bit extra. Just keep a steady hand and make sure not to dig in too deep into the sides. The triangular side areas can be a tight spot to work in, but it's not much more difficult to deal with than the main center area. Next, I'll grab my dual action sander and refine down the edge a little bit further to get it flat. At this stage, it can be an aggressive grit paper, something like 80 or 120 grit, and I will refine it down later with finer grits. Just like with the previous steps, I don't want to over sand these areas, I'm just looking to get them level with the rest of the edge of the grill. With the sides, the larger area near the center is easy to get an angle on. For the thinner side by the headlight, I tackled some of that by hand with some 80 grit paper off camera. Here's how my grill looks at this stage of the project. The bars are cut, and the edges are sanded down pretty flat. Now it's time to repair the areas where the bars were cut. To get started on that, let's flip the grill back around and scuff up the back of the edges that were cut. I'm using some coarse grip papers, and the point of doing this is to just simply give the repair material a rough edge to grip onto. To help contain the repair material, I'll use some aluminum tape. This is typically used for HVAC type stuff, but works great for this application too. I just need a handful of small strips and I'll apply these on the back of the edge like so. The tape needs to cover the whole opening on the edge, but also needs to have a little extra overhang so that it can be folded inward. Once all of the edges are taken care of, let's flip this back around again and grab some plastic repair material. For these types of jobs, I like to use Valvoline's PlyoGrip Plastic Repair No. 3, though other panel bond type epoxies can work just as well too. Apply the repair material in and around the edge openings like so. Then take a Bondo spreader and level it out so that it's nice and even but not built up too much. A couple passes over the area may be needed, but I need to work quickly because this hardens up in just a few minutes. It's also best to not overwork a certain area. While it may require two or three passes, it's usually best to set it and forget it after that. Again, the triangular pieces are a little cramped, but it's quite reasonable to get in there with a spreader to get the job done. After about 30 to 40 minutes, I came back to remove the aluminum tape, and it looks like it did a great job acting as a barrier. Now that I've built up the front edge, it's time to build up the back of the edge. I'm going to go a little thicker with the application here so that the repair material will be nice and strong. I also like to use a small brush to evenly spread the repair material around so that I get a nice even spread of it. Now, while I do want to thicken this up some, it's also important to not add so much that the center mesh piece won't fit on properly. There's not much of a point of building it up back further towards the engine compartment either. That would just add more to sand later. Speaking of sanding, once this is all cured, then I'll get my three inch dual action sander out again and start to smooth down the repaired areas to be flat again. Like before, I'm starting with a coarse grit paper and then I'll swap to finer grits as I get closer to the edge. 
I prefer using at least three to four different grits of paper during this process. The finishing grit that I'll leave this at is 320 grit. That'll be fine enough to blend in the repaired areas, but coarse enough for paint to stick just fine. Here's how mine looks after sanding. Overall, it's coming along great. The gaps are filled and relatively smooth, but there are a few areas that I did over sand as well as some spots with some small pinholes. Also, the back edge is a little uneven. I'll go ahead and take care of that real quick by flipping it over and running the sander along the edge until we're back to a stock depth. After that, I'll grab some Bondo and add some hardener and start mixing it up. I'm using enough to get all the areas with the plastic repair, plus some for the surrounding areas. Because I mixed up a decent sized batch of Bondo, I need to work fairly quickly before it starts to harden up. Again, I'm applying this with a Bondo spreader. And I'm using enough pressure to properly fill the areas, but not too much pressure as to squeegee it out of there. Just like with the plastic repair material, I like to go over it a couple times and then set it and forget it. The side areas might get a little sloppy just because it's a tight space. If there's not a lot of repair needed here, then just add a minimal amount. This won't take long to harden, and while it does, I'll give a quick look around of how my grill looks at this stage of the project. Next, I'll get the dual action sander out again and start working on knocking down the bulk of the Bondo with 120 grit paper. Since I just filled these areas, the last thing I want to do is over sand this and need to fill it again. So I'm using a lot of caution just to make sure that I have just the right amount of pressure. As I progress through this step, I'll swap to finer grits until I get to a 320 grit. This is going to be the best grill to stop at, as I mentioned before. Anything finer than 320 really wouldn't have much of a noticeable improvement on the end result on something like this. To really get into the corners properly, I used a small rounded sanding block and worked on them until they blended into the side edges. If a rounded sanding block isn't available, wrapping some sandpaper around a thick wooden dowel or a marker will work just fine for this step. I'll double check all of the areas before deciding that this is going to be ready for paint. Getting a good visual inspection will help, but it's also important to feel with my hand to check for any unevenness too. Once it's good for paint, I'll grab a red Scotch-Brite pad and scuff up the outer surface. I'm using an imported aftermarket grill to start with. I like using these instead of an OEM grill that has chrome on it. Stripping the chrome would be needed if a color swap of the grill frame to black is desired, and that is a big pain to deal with. After the grill is all scuffed up, then I'll run over it with a tack cloth to remove any dust. This is important so that I can get a nice, smooth, dirt-free paint job. Before painting, I want to lay down some primer first. I like using the Spraymax brand 1K Self-Etch Primer Filler. This dries quickly and will help even out the edges a little bit. Next up, I'll be using a flat black paint for the finish. Again, I'll be using the Spraymax brand, and for this, it's their 1K trim paint in matte black. Look at how nice this turned out. What a big difference this makes already. I feel like I'm dealing with a whole new grill already, and I don't even have the mesh piece in yet. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the mesh piece that we have for sale on our website. This set is pre-cut specifically for the 95 through 97 Tacoma with the three-piece design as shown in this video. The center piece is formed with some 90 degree bends on the edge, and the side pieces are intentionally a little oversized for the openings, but not by much. Both sides and the main center piece are included in the mesh set. The center piece should go right onto the back of the modified grill like so, with the bent edges facing forward. To temporarily hold the mesh to the grill, I'll grab some cable ties and foam. The ties will help keep hold the mesh tightly in position while the foam will help protect the surface finish of the grill from the ties. Wrapping the ties on is easy. The tail end loops through the grill and through the mesh and the head of the tie should fasten on while resting on the back of the mesh. I just need to get the mesh to hold up tight against the back edge of the grill. There's no need to over tighten the ties because that might distort the shape of the grill or damage the finish of the painted areas. The side pieces are a little trickier to deal with since the shape of the back of the grill opening is awkward. I needed to twist the mesh some to get it to conform to the opening shape. Even then, it's not going to lay perfectly flat, but I'll get it as close as I can. 
Tying on three of the four edges of the sides is easy, but the inner edge will need to have a couple ties daisy chained through the center opening, like what's shown here. Getting just the right tension is tricky. Be sure to check the positioning of the head of the ties on each of the sides before fully tightening them down. Once the ties are in place and I'm satisfied with the fit of the mesh, then I'll cut the tail ends of the ties off and throw them away. Here's how mine looks from the front. There doesn't seem to be any gaps and the mesh is centered up pretty good. One thing to note about the sides is that I made sure that the mesh pattern is going as straight as possible before moving on with the install. The plastic repair material I used earlier works great for bonding the mesh to the plastic, so I'll use the remainder of it and start dispensing out some. This needs to go through the mesh and make contact with the back of the grill. It's important not to get any of this to go through the front of the grill though, because that could potentially ruin the whole project. After dispensing some of this, I'll grab a small brush and even it out some. This will help spread it around a little bit to get nice even coverage. The side pieces are not so straightforward to deal with. What I like to do is apply some of this under the overlap of the mesh and then build it up around the top. Having a two-part epoxy like this plyo grip with the right viscosity is important so that it doesn't run all over the place. It is possible to attach the mesh with other adhesives, but the technique to do so may be different than what I show here in this video. Now I just need to wait for this to harden and once everything is cured, then I'll come back and cut off the ties. The foam should also be removed at this time and they can both be thrown away. Our grill mod is now complete. Let's flip it around and see how it turned out. Wow, this looks great. The new grill is gonna bring a whole new life to the truck and the new deep mesh install really looks awesome. The new grill can also be easily customized with emblems or lettering or really just looks great plain as is. Here's a rendering of how this grill will look installed on the truck. And well, that's all I've got for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you have any questions about it, then feel free to contact me and thanks for watching.